think Pastor Ross received a fair trial? My son was accused of crimes against the church, bank fraud, money laundering, and many more. He was removed from our family, stood trial for a crime that he was not guilty of. He was convicted and not given a fair trial. It was devastating. Uh, here I was, a young man who um, had, had turned from the streets and from wrong and I had actually found somebody who I could look up to and who I could pattern my life after. And I felt that compelled enough to say, we got to get these experts, see what they tell us. And when they told us what they did, I felt we had a case to go forward on. The story of Pastor Onslo Ross varies based on who's telling it. The assistant U.S. attorney painted the pastor as a crook who committed fraud, manipulated a congregation's trust, and mismanaged funds. And a jury believed it finding him guilty of 54 counts of bank fraud, money laundering, and various other illegal transactions before he was sentenced to 10 years by a federal justice, Ashley Royal. But many members of Pastor Ross's family and the Reaching Souls Cathedral of Praise Church have more faith in his innocence than the court's process and decision. I make reference to my son as Pastor Ross but he's my son. He is facing 10 years in prison. He has already served, soon will be three years in July. I would like to see the justice system grant fairness to everyone, grant them their opportunity to clarify, rectify, and amend the wrongs, perhaps, through fairness, justice for all. This is America. And we live in a free society, regardless of your race, color, or creed. Ross's immediate and church family are not the only ones that believe that he deserves a new trial. Bradford Cohen, a Fort Lauderdale attorney, became aware of the case after Pastor Ross contacted him about his conviction. I discussed the case with him in detail. I found that there was an injustice there. I flew up to Alabama within a week and we discussed the case together and I realized that it was a grave injustice that took place. Cohen was critical, not just of the court, but of the original lawyer secured by Ross to represent him. I don't think Pastor Ross received a fair trial. I've reviewed the transcripts and I've reviewed the individuals that were called to the stand. There was no insurance expert. There were people missing that could have helped his case. There were experts that could have testified in his case that were never called. And for all these reasons, Ross has secured new representation to make sure all the information he believes was left out could be heard by a jury. Marsha Sheen is currently the lawyer leading the charge for a new case. He came to me, I do a lot of post-conviction work, um, especially appellate and habeas work. He came to us because his appeal had been denied and was looking for someone to reinvestigate his case to determine whether he got a fair trial. And Sheen wants the facts of the case heard. What happened here was that Pastor Ross had a church with two pieces of property on it. Those pieces of property, one was mortgaged and one was not. A, a damage occurred to one of the pieces of property, the one that was not under the burden of the mortgage. They received an insurance check in repayment to the damages to rebuild the property, do whatever they wanted with that check or that piece of property. What they did is they went and, and not, even, not even Pastor Ross, but they went and deposited the check and used it for other purposes besides replacing or repairing the building. The insurance company felt that was fraud because they were entitled to give that insurance check to the mortgage company on the other piece of property and the insurance company had put their name on the check and the check was cashed without the endorsement of the insurance. Actually CB&T Mortgage Company that was the other payee on that check. So what had happened was it was an insurance fraud case but the mortgage company brought the case which was CB&T. The end result is that they charged him with fraud 
and he was convicted and given a 10 year sentence for the amount of money that was associated with the check that was cashed by someone else and used for other purposes for the church. But like Ross's family, she believes that there was information left out of this story that could be key to not only justifying, but winning a new trial. Now what we've done is gone back and asked an insurance expert and a mortgage expert to tell us whether or not he had a right to do that. Even if he didn't do it himself, if he was a part of it, did he have a right to do it? It turns out that the insurance expert and the mortgage expert indicate that he could have done what he did without showing an intent to defraud anyone. The story, however, becomes more complex as Pastor Ross himself alleges that Steve Williams, VP of CB&T Bank, was advised by the bank's attorney, Robert Tuggle, that there was a problem with the deed to secure debt. This allegedly occurred before Assistant District Attorney George Christensen prosecuted Pastor Ross. In other words, Ross believes they knew that the church owned the property free and clear. This is the very crucial information that Cohen believes needs to be heard. The remedy for Pastor Ross's injustice has to be a new trial. But this story is about more than a pastor and a trial. It's about a community whose lives have been drastically affected by the destruction of a building, followed by the destruction of a leader's reputation. Interim pastor of the Reaching Souls community, Xavier Cross, is one of those rocked by this case. It was devastating. Uh, here I was, a young man who um, had, had turned from the streets and from wrong, and I had actually found somebody who I could look up to and who I could pattern my life after and Cross feels that Pastor Ross is the reason he was able to turn his life around and keep it moving in the right direction. I had found a wife and started to raise a family and when I needed an, uh, a, a steady hand or guidance, he was always right there for me. Any question I had any time, day or night, I could always call him up. And but not having him to call on and the thought of having to take over the leadership role of his mentor was an overwhelming reality. I felt the, as if there was no way I could feel those shoes or, or, or to even walk in those would be just insane. And, and after that, you know, my, I told my wife and our young family, and although she knew that it was going to be rough and that um, because of the chain of events, because the church was under scrutiny, she felt as if I was setting myself up for failure. We, through it all, we pulled together and taken on the task. And when Pastor Cross says we, he means an entire congregation. The members of the church were, were standing behind him 100%. Even during the trial, the, the entire courthouse was filled. Hundreds of people that are supporting him lined, lined up in support of our pastor. But yet the media made it seem as if he was taken from us, when this was a man that all he ever did was give to us. So many members of the church decided to give back. And people have just said, okay, well, this is our church. Pastor Ross made a difference in my life. When nobody else cared about me, he loved me, he cared for me. When everybody else had given up on me, he was still there uh, in my corner. And I believe that you know, the hand of God is yet there and, and we're on the rebound and he's getting ready to build us up to, to where we should be and, and we're thankful for it. The fact that the church is able to grow in spite of the controversy speaks to the perseverance of the Reaching Souls family. However, there is another family looking to be reached and it's Pastor Ross's own family that has had to endure more than anyone else. During this time, I have personally lost my husband, who was a dedicated member of this church and worked until he died. I have, within six months, I lost my son. My husband died in October. My son was sent to prison in July for his daughter at the removal of the father from the family. It caused the children to be a family without a father and impoverished by the ordeal. If not financially, they were impoverished because they have been denied the privileges of a father in home. His daughter will be four years old this year and she vaguely knows her father, although she receives trips, but it is not the same. A young male black child has grown up without the influence of his father, and he's getting ready to enter the teen years. 
he is not there to help with the nurturing and molding of his children. The impact of an absent pastor has been buffered by a competent interim leader. But for the Ross children, there's no interim dad to buffer their pain. This ordeal has impacted the Ross family and the families of the church also, but my appeal today is not for those young women and young men whom they look to the pastor as their father, their brother, their friend, but trying to carry on without the influence in the home, in the neighborhood, the community of a son, a father, and a brother has tremendously impact our home and our lives, and it will never be changed. So there is a complex story of a pastor, leader, son and father, who many believe to be nothing but a typical criminal. His lawyers, however, are saying that before full and proper judgment can be delivered, that the truth from all sides should be fully heard. At the very least, give him a new trial where these experts testify in front of the jury. In this case, to, to, to do the right thing by him, we have to go ahead and give him a new trial with these experts testifying. Even the lawyer who represented him at trial has said, yes, I didn't do these things. I probably could have. She has indicated that it is something that was relevant, and that is one of the reasons we think the case should be retried. And a mother wants not just the truth to be heard, but for the world to see the humanity of a man that has done so much for so many. My heart's desire is that, that justice will be served and that, that he will be exonerated of all these false charges. Um, I, I'm yet praying that, that people will, will see the light and won't be blinded by this injustice. Um, they, they will see him for who he really is and for what he really did. His whole and his sole intention was for the church of God was for the people of God to better us, to push us, and to move us into the destiny and the place where God would have us to be. I'm yet praying that, that, that the, the right people, whoever needs to see, will see who he really is and what he has to do for, for making and for the world that we live in.